Welcome back to Black Widow Fishing. I'm Bryce. This week we got five more viewer submitted questions and we have an update on our special plan for the year 2023. So stick around. So we're gonna start the year off right. We put up a poll last year, or at least the last few weeks of last year, about what kind of special content you would like to see me do. Um, either from a 40 hour blog, where our vlog, where you guys would follow me around and I pretty much give you a more in-depth insight to what I do day in and day out. Or there was to restore a fishing boat, or the last option was to build a tiny fishing boat. So we had a dead tie between all three. And so with that, I'm actually going to go ahead and pick which I prefer to do. Um, we might get around to the other two, but for now, this channel, on this channel, we will be restoring a fishing boat. I don't know if it's going to be a big boat, a small boat. I need to start doing the process. So that's what we got coming in store for, for the future. So it's something to look forward to. But for now, we've got five more viewers submitted questions that we're going to go ahead and answer. And the first question states, where do you get money for tournament entry fees or how do they get paid? Well, it really depends on the tournament, but I can tell you they get paid by me more often than not. Um, whether I have sponsorships or not, I have to go on and register for the tournament and pay for them. And at this point, present time for this current year. We haven't had any tournaments come up yet. We do have the um, California Bass Nation Kayak and Wild West Bass Trail Kayak tournaments in Lake Shasta on January, I believe it's the 8th. So the first weekend of January, we have that coming up and I pay for that um, through last year. But normally or typically the entry fees are paid by the angler. You might have an instance where you have a sponsorship that doesn't just provide gear or commissions on your sales, but actually provides a monetary uh, incentive for you. And then you could use that to pay for your um, your fishing entry fees. Uh, I pay for my entry fees for the kayak. And then when it comes to the boat tournaments, um, since I do that with a partner, we do split those fees. Um, and then if we win anything, we split those as well. Um, so I would say if you're planning on getting started into tournament fishing, just be prepared for the additional cost of what you will have to pay for, which includes the entry fees, uh, the camping fees, if you wanted to camp, all your bait and things like that. Just the things that most people don't think about. Um, so that is how the entry fees are paid. Our second question states, what type of knot do you use or do you recommend? Any tips for tying the knot? So there are a number of different knots out there and every angler swears by their knot. I am definitely not a knot snob, so I honestly could care less about what kind of knot I use. Um, I believe that you should retie your knots every time after either getting snagged or catching a fish and that will provide you the best chance with your knot staying intact and not failing. For the most part, everything that we fish for in these tournaments or that we catch in the tournaments, it's not going to bite through a knot or we don't need to have it super strong. Um, I've seen most of the knots can handle up to a 10 pounder, uh, but chances of you catching a 10 pounder in a tournament are not very high. Uh, it does happen, so I'm not saying that, but we're going for more of the cookie cutter shape kind of fish for the most part in the kayak tournaments and the boat tournaments. It's just luck of the draw, really. So particular knots that I use, I typically either use uh, a couple overhands, a slip knot, or a nail knot. I definitely prefer the nail knot and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. Um, but I haven't noticed any negative effects on the type of knot that I use. Um, for braid though, I, I would say you need to be a little cautious about braid. You're probably not going to want to use um, like a cinch knot or anything like that. Uh, you're, you're really just going to want to use like an improved clinch or a nail knot for, for braid. Um, and then when it comes to tying leaders, I personally do not tie leaders um, onto other line. Um, I just think it's a big point of failure. I don't really recommend it for anybody really, but I mean, you are able to, you're able to do what you want and use whatever type of knots you want to use. Uh, my fishing partner does tie a lot of leaders. I personally do not. Um, but that comes down to the individual fishing style. 
Um, so when it comes to like drop shots, I'd rather just take an extra piece of line and tie it to where my hook, the extra eyelet of the hook, rather than tying it to the other part of that line, or even running the additional leader and tying the hook in the middle. Um, just little things like that. Uh, but for a tip, and the reason why I use an L-knot is because I use this tool, and there's many like them here, I'll get you close up, where it's basically a knot tying tool. This will help you tie a nail knot, and it's not that I can't tie, tie a knot, and this is not like faster than using uh, your regular hands. It's, it's almost the same speed, um, but the reason that I use this tool is, not, there's a few reasons. First, I have it here with clippers on here, so I don't have to go and bite my line or try and find a different set of tool to actually cut the tag ends of my um, my knots. It also has a file here, and so I'll give all of my hooks just a quick file every time after I tie on or retie. And then it's got this hook right here where you can put the loop of your bait and you can cinch down that knot super tight. You don't really have to figure out how to kind of hold it because you can just put the hook here and then you can pull it. Um, so it's more for convenience as well as safety, but also when you use this device to make your knots, your knots are always going to be consistent and they're going to be tight. Um, and I think that's the most important part is that if you have a consistent knot and then you can identify any problems. So if you're losing fish uh, by breaking you off and your knots are consistent, then you can track it back to your knot rather than another factor. Um, so I recommend these. They're not for everyone and you can't tie really other types of knots with them. You can tie leaders to lot to main line. You can tie a nail knot. Um, there are a couple different things you can do with this if you learn how to use this tool. Um, but I do recommend it and I always use it. I don't really care what anybody thinks if they're like, oh, you're not really tying your knots, right? I don't care. I use this and I go with it. So those are my tips for tying knots. The third question states, what is your favorite finesse technique? When we're talking about finesse, I would tell you that my favorite finesse technique is nothing. I hate finesse fishing. <laughs> um, but like everything in fishing, it's sometimes necessary. So when it actually comes to finesse techniques or finesse specific techniques, there are two that I like to use, one's more so than the other. And those two are the Tokyo rig and the drop shot. Um, the drop shot is really, really effective and I catch a lot of fish on it when I otherwise wouldn't. The Tokyo rig, I love it because it is a finesse rig, but you can fish it like a power fishing rig. You can punch through, thick mats and kind of fish it like a Texas rig. You can fish it like a drop shot. Um, a lot of people still aren't really using Tokyo rigs or don't even know how they are rigged or know what they are. So it can be effective when other things like your drop shot might not work, um, at least until it becomes more popular and the fish start to see it more. So those are my two favorites. Our fourth question is, what do you believe is the most important piece of equipment that is not directly related to fishing? I will say this again until I'm blue in the face, which might take a really long time given my complexion. I'm probably not gonna get blue, but this is the most important piece of fishing equi or equipment that is not fishing related. Your life preserver. Um, you can call it a life jacket, you can call it a flotation device, life preserver because it's gonna preserve your life. Either way, I think that is the most important piece of non-fishing equipment that you can have on your boat or your kayak and use anytime that you're fishing. But I understand that this question might not have been asking about life jackets. Um, it might have been asking about other tools, such as anything else that you might use that's not fishing related. Um, I can't really think of anything other than the life, life vest, though. Um, I would say other than your life vest, the next thing you want to have is either a knife or a good pair of pliers. Um, and I think you can do a lot of things with just those two things. And then when it comes to um, something else, um, obviously your eye protection, uh, if it's sunny, uh, or even when it's not sunny, you could use those polarized lenses and see right through the water. Um, other than that, I would say the next important thing for your health and safety would be sunscreen. Uh, I always recommend everybody use sunscreen all the time. I use sunscreen um, that's really hammered into me by my wife who did previously have skin cancer. Um, so sunscreen is a big deal. So moving on to our fifth and final question. What do you do for enjoyment when you aren't fishing? 
Um, I'm usually either working, and if I'm not working, I'm usually just hanging out and relaxing. Um, the two things that I like to do when I'm relaxing are I like sports. Um, hockey and racing are my thing right now. Uh, hockey's going on. Racing what doesn't start until another couple months. Um, I'm into uh, MotoGP as well as F1 and IndyCar. I don't really watch any other kind of racing. Those are just the three series that I watch. Um, and then the other thing that I like to do, really, 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 or really like my TV, sitting down and eating ice cream, which is why I'm probably fat right here in the belly, which is something that we're taking care of this year. Um, so those are probably the two things that I do the most. Um, I'll go to the movies. You know, I'll do everything in regular people do. Um, but definitely watching TV and watching sports are what I kind of do to relax myself. So that's all for this week. If you have any comments, questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I'll read every one of them as I always do. And stay around to the channel. We're going to be doing a lot of um, behind the scene work this week as we have our first tournament of the year. And we're also going to start working on that special project for the year. So that's it for now. Catch you next time.